Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. This is going to be the next installment of which players I think are good or bad for the new team of the season. So this one is going to be for the Liga Santander team of the season. There is a ton, a ton of good cards uh, to look at in this team of the season. Um, I think that there might only be like three or four kind of like every usually every team of the season is very similar it's usually like three or four that's kind of like oh that's really like a whatever card but uh most of them are pretty good so right off the bat i see that the cards are already striker messi striker griezmann and striker ronaldo that is beautiful i'm very happy that ea actually did that because when you get a player that's a striker card, right? A striker card you could put in any position. So as you guys know, in FIFA 18, Ultimate Team, what you normally do, right, is you, you set up a pre-formation, right, before you actually start the game. When you do that, right, you can put your Griezmann as a center mid, a center defensive mid, a cam, and then you can try to work around some links with him so that he can actually fit in your squad, right? Um, so that you can actually have some sick players in the team and they will be on full chemistry just depending on what types of links you need here and there, right? So I like that they made them striker cards. It makes them more usable, in my opinion, because not usable, but it makes them more like, uh, like you want them more, right? There's a word for it, but I can't get it right now. You want them more because... It's so easy to just put them as a cam or as a center mid or as a CDM or whatever, right? Just to get those chemistry links and then in-game switch formation. So we're going to go ahead and start off with Lionel Messi. So Lionel Messi's card right off the bat, it looks very similar to the team of the year. It's actually almost the exact same, to be honest. They're very, very similar cards. It is basically the same card. Um, so we're going to look at the specifics right now. So Medium, medium work rates, very, very nice to have if you're going to be playing him uh, as a cam, even as a left striker because he's so fast at dribbling with the ball at his feet. Uh, and let me see if they added the trade. Sorry, they already did. So that's good. So Lionel Messi team of the season card has 99 acceleration, 94 sprint speed with 92 agility and 98 balance. So uh, dribbling on the ball, he's going to be fantastic because if you actually look at the traits that he has, he has dribbler, speed dribbler, right? So he's going to dribble on the ball very, very quickly. When you're just using the left stick on the PlayStation or the Xbox controller, he's very responsive to every direction you move towards, right? Very, very responsive um, in those areas. Uh, he also has a long shot taker, which is very nice to have, right? So if you're playing Messi, because Messi, Messi's long shots, if you hit them with the right amount of power, it goes in almost every single time, right? So with the long shot taker, if you're playing him as a cam, and he's kind of rotating just outside the 18-yard box. And you want to just like move to the right side with him and take a shot with his right foot, uh, four-star weak foot. He'll take a decent shot. But if you take it onto his left foot and you're, you know, moving off to the left side and then wanting to shoot across goal, he's going to take absolute bangers, right? Because he does have uh, 91 shot power, 94 long shots, 99 finishing, so on and so forth. His shooting stats are unbelievable, right? So... Uh, with Messi's card, he also has the finesse shot trait. Now, the finesse shot trait makes it so that uh, when you actually take a finesse shot, especially outside of the 18-yard box, they take a more direct, really clean finesse shot. So I don't know if you guys ever use like Messi's regular cards or even his informs or whatever, but when Messi got, gets onto his left foot, especially for his team of the year or his team of the season, he always just... He always like aims it perfectly right so if you're on the right side and you're cutting into his left foot cutting into his left foot and you're doing that finesse shot across goal he's disgusting at doing it because for some reason the goalies are worse from afar than they are from up close right so the way that they dive sometimes they just dive like this and Messi just hits it into the corner every time like if you position him on his left foot he's gonna be an absolute banger Passing wise, he would be uh, amazing to have as a cam. Short passing, ninety nine. Uh, long passing, ninety eight. Uh, he also has a playmaker trait, so his passing is gonna be very good. Chip shots, really nice, right? So if you guys haven't watched that tutorial that I made on my channel, uh, there's like a chip shot. There's a there's a way to consistently hit uh, chip shots in FIFA, right? Basically, what you would have to do is you hold the left bumper or L one for a solid two seconds. And then, like, before you get to the goalkeeper. Because what that does, that actually slows down your player and it hits the chip shot more consistently, right? So, with players like Messi, they'll just do that chip shot more consistently. 
Um, heading wise, he is 99 heading accuracy and 91 jumping. So the fact that he's five foot six, uh, is actually not a problem at all. Messi is one of those cards where the fact that he has a five, the fact that he is five foot six doesn't bother me at all. He's one of those types of cards, right? Uh, physically, he's actually pretty decent considering his dribbling is so god tier on the ball, very very quick. 79 strength isn't the greatest because five six height people uh, people who are tall like center backs that are tall like Eric Bai will still be able to get the ball off a Messi, but you'll definitely be able to outmaneuver Bai. Uh, just because of how good Messi's dribbling is. So shooting-wise, he's going to be very good. Passing-wise, he's going to be good. Off the ball and on the ball, he's going to be very good. Medium, medium work rates. I would heavily suggest using Lionel Messi as your cam. I think he would make an absolutely awesome cam. But if you use him as a left striker, he would be good as well. Only problem is that if you do use him as a left striker... Um, Again, lack of physical strength could be a problem. It depends on your play style. Because for me, I like having a physical player like Ronaldo up top. Because I like being able to do the driven pass to the striker to lay it off to somebody else, right? Or doing the driven pass off to the striker so that they can control it first time and shoot right away, right? So um, it's very, very situational to how you play. But I think Lionel Messi would make a very, very good cam. Especially since you can actually, again, switch him to a cam. Because he's a striker. So you can go striker to center forward, center forward to cam, right? So really, really good card there. Uh, next card we have here is Cristiano Ronaldo. So um, in regards to the differences with Ronaldo's cards, uh, the things the things that are very noticeable in the team of the year is mostly the pace. So like if you look at the card here, it's negative six, negative seven. You do notice that difference between this card and the team of the years. It definitely runs quicker, right? Finishing feels more consistent. Um, the biggest thing that they update, but they always kind of keep the same, so it's a characteristic of his, is the 68 balance. That's a big deal, because if you look at his 94 version of his card, he has 93 balance. 93, uh, or 93, 63 balance, right? Um, the thing about the balance being 63 is that it makes the dribbling somewhat slower. And you'll notice it with Ronaldo's card whenever you use him, that he's when he dribbles, he's off balance, right? But the thing is, is that with Ronaldo's card, he has so many stats that make up for his poor balance that it's not even noticeable. It's kind of similar with Thierry Henry, right? Like Thierry Henry's card, people say that, you know, uh, they don't like him too much, but I absolutely love Thierry Henry's prime card in the game. I think he's fantastic, right? He also has poor balance, which is very noticeable, but Thierry Henry has this trait of um, trying to beat the defensive line, and that's absolutely gorgeous to have. That's what makes him uh, play like an absolute monster, in my opinion. But uh, with Ronaldo's card, 95 acceleration, 98 sprint speed, so... <clears throat> excuse me, he's going to be very quick on the ball. 96 agility with 68 bounce. The 68 bounce hinders him a little bit, but it really doesn't at the same time because if you ever use Ronaldo's Team of the Year card, it's filthy to use, right? Team of the Year is only upgraded in certain aspects, right? They're very, very similar prices. You might as well just get the Team of the Year version, to be honest, because you will not notice a huge... It's cheaper, actually, because it's not Team of the Season. Um, but yeah, so uh, 99 reaction, 99 ball control. He's incredibly fast, at pulling off skill moves, uh, leaving from a skill move. Leaving from a skill move is basically like, so you know those skill moves like the new skill move where it's not the Burba spin, but it's the backwards Burba spin. So instead of going forward right, you go backwards right. That skill move uh, is very, very effective with players like Ronaldo. The fake Rabona, he does it really quickly. He doesn't do it like slowly. Like Neymar is the same thing, right? Um, yeah, fantastic in those areas as well. His finishing is god tier, right? Whenever you use the, the Ronaldo cards, like the team of the seasons or the team of the years, his finishing is like on another level. This guy just finishes everything. This game is, is paid to win the concept of like being able to finish in any area with these types of cards. It's absolutely disgusting. If you know what you're doing with these cards, you can really use them to their full potential. Um, with passing, I think this card's the best striker in the game. Let's be real. Uh, him and maybe Prime Ronaldo. Never, I never really use Prime Ronaldo consistently, but his car looks fantastic. But team of the year, team of the season, Ronaldo can't go wrong with it, right? Um, Eighty-six free kick. The free kick stuff doesn't matter because free kicks. Ronaldo has a run up to the free kick. The run up wastes time. It allows the player to take players out of the wall to position the goalie differently. It allows them to take the players out of the wall to put them into the into the net so they can block the ball easily. So uh, in regards to Ronaldo's card, his passing is going to be very good, right? So. He does have 87 long passing, uh, 94 short passing, so it's still going to be amazing. Because in comparison to his regular um, regular card, it is 77 long passing. The reason why the passing stats 
being improved is a very, very nice touch is because there's certain areas, right, where you make a first time pass without controlling the ball, right? Because if you control the ball, you waste time. But if you hit the ball first time on a Y pass or an A pass and it can go through on goal because of that, it's nice to have. So with Ronaldo being 94 short passing and 87 long passing, a player of his physical stature in the game if you do a driven pass to him, he'll be able to control the ball really nicely from the first time pass, right? So he'll control the ball and make it go very direct to the area you generally want to go to. So he's going to be very good in that regard. Obviously, his heading is absolute god tier. 96 strength, 99 jumping with 99 heading accuracy. So he's just going to be an absolute monster. The fact that his aggression is improved by this much, right? He has 75 aggression is beautiful to have, right? Because he's so strong. He's so big in game, right? He has 95 acceleration, 98 sprint speed. That 75 aggression, when he's going to be battling up against defenders, he's going to absolutely just plow them. They're not going to be able to like do anything against him, even though they're really good center backs. Like, if you guys have ever used Ronaldo's card, Ronaldo physically is better than most center backs in the game. Like, there's so many times where he just completely destroys people. So his team of the season um, would only be better, in all fairness. Griezmann's card. So Griezmann actually has, in my opinion, a somewhat usable card nowadays, right? So this this card, this SBC version of his card is actually very nice too. Um, every any, I think anything after 90, I wouldn't even get the 90, but any 91 and higher, those cards are very usable. So in regards to Griezmann's card, the only thing that's always going to be a downfall is the three-star weak foot. So in certain positions, if you want to do like a driven shot, He's not going to be necessarily ideal to have in the team. But finishing, I wouldn't be surprised if he's absolutely got to here. So um, he is five foot eight with 96 acceleration, 95 sprint speed. So if you're using Griezmann as a striker, he's more of the dribbling type, right? Because he has 99 agility, 90 balance. And his dribbling on the ball is quite nice. Um, oh, I almost forgot stream. Uh, stream. <laughs> uh, stream too much. Uh, traits with Ronaldo, he has takes powerful free kicks, kind of irrelevant, just more of a fun concept. Uh, dribbler, speed dribbler, so left stick dribbling with him, going to be very good. And shooting and long shot taker, so his long shots are going to be absolutely god tier, right? He doesn't have the finesse shot trait, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. Uh, in regards to Antoine Griezmann's card, the only trait that he has is the dribbler, speed dribbler. He should have long shots. His long shots are pretty nasty from time to time. Um... But dribbler speed dribbler will make his dribbling very, very quick and responsive. He has good dribbling stats in general. His pace is very good. He's finishing 99, 91 shot power, 92 long shots, um, composure 96. If you are going to be using Griezmann's card, uh, I would highly, highly recommend using him as a left striker. Because if you use him as a right striker, you're going to be uh, very linear with the cutting inside onto his left foot and then shooting it across body, right? The problem with people knowing that a player has a three-star weak foot is that they play a certain way because of it. Like, for instance, if I'm playing, like, drafts, right, and I come up against, like, an Alexis Sanchez, I will block that Alexis Sanchez always on his right side because I know that the player knows that his weak foot isn't good enough. Sometimes they'll score the most random goals with their weak foot, it, it, and it won't even be... It, it'll Because it's RNG, right? When, you're, when your player has a three-star weak foot and they take a really good power strike it's RNG that the, it goes into the back of the net. So most of the times, in terms of consistency, which this game isn't really that consistent, but you know what I mean, uh, I would always block Griezmann's to his left side, right? You always want to block it to his left, because if he gets anywhere into the box on his left foot, I can almost guarantee you that he'll finish every single opportunity because he has 99 finishing, 91 shot power, excuse me, 92 long shots, 98 volleys, 96 composure. Like his shooting in general is going to be very, very good. 92 stamina, so you can actually use him as a cam if you really want to. You can even use him as a center mid because if you use him as a center mid, his his shots with his left foot in the center mid area would also be very good as well. So definitely look into that as well. Aggression 84, 99 jumping, 99 heading accuracy. Nice to have. He is 5'8", but it's, it is nice to have the maximized jumping and heading accuracy um, for him to not be super linear in the play, right? Uh, Saul actually has a very decent card. So if we look at his card and his work rates, because it's his work rates that I'm looking at the most, he has medium high work rates. This Saul card is very, very usable as a CDM. And for that matter, he would actually be a very good CDM, right? He is 
Uh, a four-star weak-footed player with 85 finishing, 85 comp uh, 88 composure with 89 shot power, uh, 79 acceleration, 81 sprint speed with 80, 84 agility and 75 bounce. Very, very nice to have for someone. I wouldn't recommend playing him as a center mid. Definitely as a CDM. CDM, this guy is going to be very, very good, right? Um, defending stats in general, 93 interceptions, 99 heading accuracy, 82 marking could present to be a problem. So if you're going to be playing with him, I wouldn't even necessarily, I would just tell him to stay back while attacking. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put his specific game style on him because with, uh, with Saul's card, because his interceptions is 93, but his aggression is 74, uh, it's stuff you have to definitely look into. Now, because he's going to be playing as a CDM for you, I would highly recommend giving him an anchor card, right? To give him as much pace as he possibly can, as well as defensive and physical boosts, right? Uh, whether it actually gives him 84 aggression, I don't know. But uh, this would definitely be the most, most ideal card to use because if you look at his traits, he doesn't have anything. I thought he would actually get the long shot, but he doesn't really take much long shots in real life, to be fair. He does from time to time, but it's not a like consistent thing, right? 85 finishing, 89 shot power, 88 composure, 4-star weak foot. So if he's outside the box, he'll be able to take a good long shot, right? He... If you use, uh, you know, with the team of the seasons nowadays, it's not like the Bakayoko situation where, or the Conte situation where if you're using them as CDMs, they're very, very um, defensive oriented, right? Because they don't really have too many good attacking stats. But with these new cards coming out, especially since Saul is Spanish, you can do so much with that, right? Like you can put Saul with Sergio Ramos in the team now with Jordi Alba on the left side and you got your full triple links, your full triangle link just from there. Uh, in the 4-3-2-1, Saul, Ramos, Jordi Alba, boom. You got a really good squad working out for you right off the bat from there. Um, he has 90 jumping or 99 jumping, but 80, uh, we'll, we'll go back to the uh, basic stats here. He has 89 jumping with 99 heading accuracy. Very nice to have for someone who's 5'11 with 86 strength so that, you know, your CDM needs to win the ball in the air at least sometimes because those 50-50s in the air... Um, are very important to win because sometimes when the goalie kicks the ball, defenders are very discombobulated in terms of the places that they're in. So it's easier for you to attack against someone, right? But if they win, then they can easily attack against you. So the 50-50s in the air um, are very, very important. He also has very good passing. So that's very nice to have for someone who will be playing as a CDM for you because if his passing is very good, um, you know, you can lay it off to the sides really nicely. Like, I would love to use this card in a 4-2-3-1 system. I think he would work out uh, really, really nicely there. Uh, but yeah, fantastic card. Again, I would probably use Anchor on him. If Anchor doesn't suit you the most, um, anything that would basically improve his defensive stats and his physical stats in a CDM position, I would do. Uh, but since his defensive stats and his physical stats are already quite decent, um, maybe even consider... Uh, I think there was a card that would give you physical shooting and pace. I could be wrong in saying that. Uh, Maestro would be okay. Architect physical and passing would be... And it wouldn't be really ideal to do. Engine gladiator, catalyst backbone. Backbone is new. Shadow, guardian, maestro, artist maybe. No hawk. Okay, so hawk would also be a very good card to put. So you can make, so you can maximize his shooting as much as you possibly can. His defensive stats are already very good. So you don't have to really mess with that too much, right? Hawk would actually probably be the most ideal card to actually put on him so that um, you can have a more, a better all-round player, right? Having the pace, having the shooting, having the defensive stats already be good, dribbling on the ball be very good for a CDM, and then having physical stats be very good too. So another very, very good card to use in your Liga Santander team if you do uh, choose to use him. All right, so the next player that we have here is Tony Cruz. So Tony Cruz's card, right off the bat, his pace is just really, really low. But his team of the season version of his card, there's a lot of people, right, that actually use this card and are really, really okay with it, right? They really like his long shots for some reason. I know that there was one player that I know uh, that uses him as a center mid in a 4-3-2-1 at some point, and he really, really liked using him in his team, right? Because he was his passing was good, his shooting was very good, his, his everything was just very good. So in regards to Tony Cruz's card, his sprint speed, and his acceleration is a little bit low. Uh, agility and balance is actually quite nice. Kind of makes up the pace a little bit so that, you know, when he's dribbling on the ball, he doesn't feel as slow. He actually feels pretty good. 99 reactions, 99 ball control, 92 dribbling, 99 composure. Very, very nice to have. Uh, shooting stats-wise, 
86 finishing with 99 composure is very nice to have. He has 98 shot power, 98, uh, 99 long shots, so his long shots will be absolutely banging, right? He does have a 5-star weak foot, right? So people need to remember that when you're, they're using this card. If you're going to be using Cruz's card, it would be best to use him in a 4-3-2-1 as a left center mid or a right center mid. Uh, pr preferably probably a left center mid. Uh, same thing with uh, a 4-1-2-2, two, two, left center mid, right center mid. Um, he would make an okay center defensive mid. His marking is a little bit low for him to be a CDM. You don't really want him to be um, all over the place in terms of being a CDM on your team. So as a center mid, if his marking isn't that great, that's fine because attacking presence-wise, he should be uh, a little bit better, right? Uh, short passing 99, long passing 99, curve 95. So his passing stats in general are also very, very nice. 84 strength, so when he's on the ball, uh, people won't be able to bully him um, that much, right? Now, in regards to the card, it is 265k, but it's not a crazy good card. It's a usable card, but the pace is still kind of low, right? And you will definitely feel that um, in the game. If you were going to get Cruz's card, uh, depending on where you're going to be playing him, uh, I would probably try to... It's tough to say. I think I would probably give him a Maestro, or not Maestro, where's the card... I think it was, uh, it wasn't Sentinel Engine. Was it Engine? It wasn't Engine. It was Artist, I think. Hawk. It was Hawk. So you can improve his physical, his shooting, and his pace, right? So you want to improve his pace as much as you possibly can. Uh, he's still going to fit his characteristic a lot. Now, this is up to you, obviously, but you could give him a Hunter card. His shooting stats are already pretty decent, but Hunter card would probably bring his card up uh, quite a bit. So a 79 pace with 98 shooting doesn't sound too bad if you believe that it's boosted by that much. The 70 sprint speed um, with uh, 90 acceleration. The acceleration you'll notice more on the center mids than anything. Center mids sometimes get in behind the box, but um, it's better to have the acceleration on the sprint speed if you want to be able to dribble with the player quite nicely, right? Uh, if we look at his traits, he has a long shot taker. So again, if you're using him... Um, as a left center mid, he would actually play that role um, really well. So I'm just getting a little bit comfortable here because a lot of players to talk about. Uh, he has a five-star weak foot, so very nice to use if you're going to be doing any sort of long shots with him. Uh, playmaker, his, pay his passing is going to be very good. Technical dribbler, so when you're doing the LTRT dribbling in the game, um, he's going to be uh, very good at doing that as well. Uh, corner specialist is, is worth looking into. Uh, because if you put him on the corners, maybe he does better uh, near post cross uh, near post crosses from the corner kick uh, than most players, right? So I'll definitely look into doing that. So in regards to Tony Cruz's card, Tony Cruz is one of the best midfielders in the world. Uh, so this card doesn't really do him justice, in all fairness. But um, it's an okay card. If anything, Parejo's card Parejo's card is better than Tony Cruz's card, and you can just see from the base card stats that it's already better, right? So. Right off the bat, right off the bat, the pace is low. That's something that you notice uh, right away, right? But in regards to this card, this card looks like a more usable CDM than someone like Tony Cruz, or even more of a usable uh, center mid than Tony Cruz, right? He has uh, 88 finishing, 94 shot power, 94 long shots. So shooting stats wise, he's very, very good. He actually has 98 penalties, which is interesting. Uh, agility and balance is 82 and 86. Respectively, I need to put my glasses on because this lighting is starting to destroy my eyes. Um, 94 reactions, 99 ball control. So dribbling on the ball, he'll actually be quite nice, but you will feel it'll be a little bit slow because the acceleration sprint speed is a little bit low. Um, physicality wise, he has 93 stamina, so very nice to have for someone who's going to either be playing um, as a center mid or a CDM for you. He does have medium, medium work rate, so. Uh, there's more to work with when a player are those is are is those work rates, right? So if you play him as a center mid, you can tell him whatever you want him to do. Uh, if you tell him to stay as a CDM, he will be pushed up a little bit more because that's kind of his characteristic of not being super defensive, but still be a very good card to have uh, in the CDM position. Uh, his that his sliding tackles are poor, right? Which can be a big deal depending on the situation because with the uh, with the AI blocks when your sliding tackle is higher it's actually better because it allows the player to block those shots that people take when they're right next to them more often than not right so it would have been helpful but this card is definitely a better card to have than Tony Cruz's card if you look at his stat or traits he has corner specialist and takes uh it depends if you take long shots Tony Cruz Tony Cruz's long shots will be better 
but uh, it's not like Putty Hill's long shots would be terrible either. Uh, he does have a four-star weak foot, so not a five-star, but his shooting stats are very good, so it kind of makes up for it uh, a little bit. So another very good card. If I were to use Padejo in my team, I would probably give him a shadow card as a midfielder because I think it's I'm more defensive oriented, so I think it'd be more important to boost his defensive stats and his uh, pace stat as much as possible because physically he's already very good. He doesn't have jumping, but he does have a very good heading accuracy. Jumping isn't a huge issue, like it is at times, right? It's it's whether or not the card is usable or not. 5'10 with 67 jumping can be a little bit lackluster, but uh, on the ball, on the floor, positioning-wise, he is going to be very good. So I would definitely recommend um, giving Parejo a shadow card. So it's a little bit more usable to use, in my opinion. Uh, next card we have here is Jordi Alba. I think with Jordi Alba's card... Uh, you don't even have to look at the specifics because I, I already know that this card's got here. Reason being is because if you guys have ever used the 85 version of the card, you truly realize what stats are important with fullbacks and stuff, right? A lot of the things with fullbacks, you can get a fullback that has 85 pace, 85 shooting, 85 passing, blah, blah, blah. But it needs to be above 90 pace, man. It just needs to be, right? When you look at this card, 97 acceleration, 97 sprint speed is very nice. The reason why the pace is so important on fullbacks is because in the center back area, you need strong physical guys that also have pace, but they need to be good, strong, and physically. Good defenders, right? But when someone gets behind those center backs, you need to be able to switch excuse me, to your fullbacks quick enough for them to be able to catch up to that attacker, right? Because sometimes when they make that wide pass in behind, if you switch to your fullback, you can actually uh, get the ball back. So definitely important to have the pace for the fullbacks more than anything, right? 99 agility, 95 bounce. So dribbling on the ball, even on his regular card is very, very nice. So I can only imagine his team of the season is going to be um, way better. He has 86 finishing with 83 composure while also being 76, uh, 76 shot powers and 78 long shots. That's actually very, very good to have for someone who's a left back because with Jordi Alba's card, he's high, medium, and work rates, right? So you can kind of ask him what you want him to do, right? So if you want him to be more defensive oriented, he'll do that. He'll do a very good job with that, but he will be very attacking oriented at the same time. But if you're an aggressive defender, right? He's going to do a very good job with that because he does have good aggression stats and good interception stats, right? So if you want him to attack, like to always overlap, he's also going to do a very good job at doing that because his finishing is very good. His composure is very good. And his shot power is kind of low, right? But if you really want to focus on attacking someone with your fullbacks, you would obviously give him a hunter card, right? Uh, or not a hunter card. I think you would give him a hunter card because with hunter you actually, um, with hunter you actually improve certain things. Because what would you give him? Physical would be more ideal, maybe. If you use Jordi Alba's card, maybe finisher would actually be more ideal, right? So you give him really good shooting stats in general because his pace is already super up there, but having a player that's better physically, so he actually has some sort of jumping, strength, aggression, his defending stats is already really good, so you have to take that into account. His heading accuracy is low, so it's it's slightly irrelevant. The more important thing with uh, jumping in the air is the actual jumping stat. If a player is inaccurate with the, with the heading in the game, some bronze players who have 60-something heading can still hit the target, right? So if his heading accuracy is 71, that's not a big deal. This right here is a big deal, right? With this and this. The strength, aggression, all of those things are very, very important, right? Uh, considering that he is five foot six, you want to have someone that can jump um, at a decent height in the air, right? You don't want to have someone that's uh, weak. He will be weak at times with this team of season card. Looking at it more and more, I think giving him a finisher card would be the most ideal thing to give him. If you're going to have a fullback that's on like balanced or always overlapping or whatever it is that you're going to be using, right? He looks like... Um, a really, really good card, in my opinion. Uh, the next card that we have here is Gerard Piquet. Right off the bat, I think Gerard Piquet is probably one of the worst cards to get um, because his acceleration is really low, his agility and balance. His agility is nice, but his balance is far too low for someone who's six foot four with 60 acceleration. Acceleration is very important because if someone beats PK and gets behind him, he needs to be able to accelerate quick enough to be able to catch up to someone, right? So that's why his acceleration is still far too low. I consider this card, in my opinion, is considered unusable, right? Because there's just far too many stats 
as for a center back that just makes him back. I think an Eric Bailly will be play will play better than this card. Again, this is all opinion based. I don't take offense to what I say, but for someone who is high attacking work rates with medium defensive work rates, right? He's an aggressive style uh, uh, defender. But if he's an aggressive style defender, he needs to be able to track back if he screws up, right? Which he won't really be able to do that well. So. Uh, I wouldn't recommend getting this card at all unless you're a fan of Barcelona's or a Spanish fan of some sort and you want to put him in the team, then so be it. But I wouldn't recommend using this card um, at all. I've used I've used cards similar to this for uh, drafts and stuff, and I wasn't a huge fan of them. It's just, it's just the concept that I have for meta that um, I'm not a huge fan of his in this game. Uh, the next card that we have here is Sergio Ramos. Sergio Ramos is a fantastic card to have, guys. And it's, it's like I said, these things are very noticeable. You know, if you were able to set work rates with players, it would be unbelievable. But in regards to Sergio Ramos's card, 81 acceleration with 84 sprint speed. That's beautiful to have for someone who's going to be playing as a center back for you, okay? He has 93 agility with 70 bounce. That's gorgeous, for someone who's a center back. So if you're using the jockey with him, he's so fast, guys. Moving left and right, really good. He doesn't feel sluggish at all. If you use PK, he's going to feel incredibly sluggish. But with Sergio Ramos's card, he's gonna be able to move left and right very smoothly. Um, if you're an aggressive style defender, this card is for you. Even if you're not an aggressive style defender, he's going to be very, very good for you. He does have high medium work rate, so you do have to be very careful with that. But this card is a very, very nice card, man. This card is just going to do absolute work for you. It's hard to say what you would actually give him. I would give him anchor, right? Because you want your you want your defender to be as perfect as possible, right? Look at the 99s that you can give this card, right? You want him to be as perfect as possible. Good pace. You know, increasing the shooting, the passing. His passing stats are also fantastic too, man. 87, 86 uh, long passing with 93 short passing. Just a beautiful card to have in general. This card is going to do work for most people. I've used Sergio Ramos's regular card, which is this one right here. And this card alone is very good, man. And you can tell right away because 75 acceleration, 77 sprint speed, 79 agility. The balance is poor, right? But the balance isn't a big deal if the 79 agility makes up for the balance. So that's what happens with Sergio Ramos's card. He's just beautiful to use, man. This card is just gorgeous. I've used this team of the year one time. It's so hard to pass this guy. He's just an absolute monster running around the pitch, man. As a center back, he's really, really good, man. It's nice to have a center back that can, again, move left and right really smoothly without any issues, right? Uh, Theo Hernandez's card. Um, I would consider Theo Hernandez's card incredibly usable, right? Um, he doesn't have high pace. Now, like I said, it would be more ideal to get fullbacks that have above 90 pace. That's like right off the bat, right? But with Theo Hernandez's card, if you were to purchase this card, being 78k and you're a fan of Atletico Madrid or you know you want to put a French left back even though I think Resilient would be way better than this card um he's got a usable card right because if you look at his stats he has 96 slide tackle 92 stein tackle he is six foot tall with 99 jumping 90 strength so if someone's trying to cross the ball um behind your defenders People won't really be able to win the ball that much against him. The only thing, though, right, is that because his pace is not in the 90s, the problem with this card is being able to actually go back into those positions so that when someone does do uh, a far post cross, that he's actually in that position. That's the problem with these cards. A thing I just noticed, though, with this card, this card has just gone from usable to way better. Here's the reason why. Attacking work rates, medium. Defensive work rates, high. So his pace is not going to be a big issue if you tell him to stay back while attacking. He's actually going to be a really good card to use in this game. Uh, 80, 98 short passing, 85 long passing. Very, very nice to have for someone who is left-footed, playing in the left-back position, right? So you can be able to pass those balls out to the sides. Your fullback will never attack. He'll actually stay back like often, right? With this card, too... Try to make his defensive stats as good as possible and his physical stats. Give him an anchor card. Increase that acceleration, sprint speed, uh, his physical stats, his defensive stats. This card actually looks very, very good. Uh, after seeing those work rates, 
it actually fits the style of the card uh, more, in my opinion. It looks like a really, really good card to use, in my opinion. Uh, 88 shot power, so finishing-wise. See, that's the thing. The card is very oriented around defending, right? So because he's very defensive-oriented, this card is going to be very good. It'd be worth actually trying out these types of cards as center-backs, because... Having decent pace, already being at 84, 81, and 88 agility, 78 balance, good defensive stats, good physical stats, give him anchor um, on 7 chemistry. This card is definitely worth trying out um, as a center back. I think he'd actually do a very good job at it. It actually says that he's a 95 center back here, which is very interesting to me. But uh, yeah, definitely worth looking into for sure, man. His jumping is 99 with 95 heading accuracy, so... Even as a center back on seven chemistry, he looks like he would actually be uh, very good. I think the partnership between him and Sergio Ramos could actually be quite nice. So I would definitely look into that for sure. Ter Stegen's card. So I haven't used this card yet because some cards that EA release... Excuse me, let me just have a drink of water here. Some cards, right, that EA releases are very weird, right? Pope's card is a team of season card. Pope should be decent, at least, right? I don't think he has the leg save trait in ultimate team. I could be wrong in saying that, though. I could be. I don't know if he has the leg save trait in ultimate team. But with Ter Stegen's card having the leg save trait, uh, which doesn't even show here. It shows on so FIFA. It doesn't show on Footbin. He has the leg save trait, guys. With those amazing goalkeeping stats... This is a card that's definitely worth looking into because he's a German from Barcelona, right? So you can work with a lot of things here. You can actually put Boateng in the team as well as Ter Stegen with Sergio Ramos and you can get links from those and then you would work with the triple links on the sides, right? So I would definitely look into doing uh, or to getting this card to trying him out because I think he would actually be a very, very good, very, very good card. Make his reflexes as much as possible, his speed as much as possible, and his positioning as much as possible because positioning is key for a goalkeeper to be very good. So I think Ter Stegen is definitely worth looking into. The cards that I always mentioned before in the past um, were usually always, usually always, uh, Ter Stegen, uh, Farman, De Gea, De Gea the most. De Gea has literally got here. His team of the year, De Gea, this is why I'm saying you have to try out Ter Stegen. Team of the year, De Gea, feels worse than the 92 or 93 versions of the cards below. The informed versions of De Gea are also very good, but the, the 99, or not the 99, 99, but his team of the year version of his card, it's just really bad. It's very inconsistent. It does a lot of really dumb things. So uh, I wouldn't necessarily look into it uh, too much with those, or, the, well, not, sorry, not looking into, but those cards are the ones that you should look into mostly when you're thinking about getting a good goalkeeper. Luis Suarez, this is going to be an interesting card because the biggest thing with this card, right, is the sprint speed upgrade. So in regards to the 95 to the 97, his sprint speed is upgraded to an 83. If you give Suarez, I would give him a Hunter card. I know that you guys are going to say, oh, but it's not that. He's a striker. He needs to be a god at finishing. Here's the thing with Luis Suarez's card. The upgrade being a plus four for the night, because I like the 95, but I think that the sprint speed, if it was a little bit more, would have been helpful a little bit. So I think with the 97 card, it's definitely worth looking into this card because physically, this guy is a beast to have up there. He's got pace now. His balance is low, which is always very noticeable, but not too noticeable, right, with the card. It, it's it's more noticeable with his card than it is with like Ronaldo and Thierry Henry, in my opinion. But I think Luis Suarez's card has the potential to be a very, very good card, right? Physically, he's going to be a beast. Passing, he's going to be decent. If you're going to be using uh, Suarez in your team, I'd recommend using him in a 4-1-2-2. Two, two, or actually, he would he could make a very good lone striker. Or, yeah, a lone striker, you wouldn't be too bad. The thing is, is the long passing being 74. So if the passing bothers you a little bit and you, you think his shooting is already really good... Then just put a catalyst card on him so that you can improve his passing a little bit, right? But the passing stats, I feel like you don't notice those too much. The shooting being perfect is what you notice the most, right? So I, I would give him a hunter card personally. I know that some of you guys are like, oh, it's seven five four. I need it to be as perfect as possible because the finishing in FIFA is very inconsistent, right? So 
Luis Suarez's card's definitely worth looking into. His physical stats are very good. 87 aggression, um, 89 strength, and 99 stamina. So you can actually use him as a center mid, which would definitely be worth looking into, by the way. He doesn't have defensive stats, but shooting-wise, this guy would be a monster. If we look at his traits, ooh, see that right there, that right there is could be a deal breaker with this card right here that right here if you tell suarez to get in behind and press the back line with this card let me know how it goes because he will be an absolute monster at doing that because he's actually physically a beast his finishing is god tier i would definitely would look into that for sure finishing is almost perfect with the hunter card uh with 90, 92 composure very, very good card to have in general, right? So I would definitely, definitely try out a Luis Suarez for sure, man. He looks like a card that would perform really, really well in game. Casemiro is a very interesting card. Um, I've always told people with Casemiro's card that the biggest thing that he was missing with was pace. So right off the bat, you gotta put it, you gotta slap a nice little anchor on him, give him physical B stats because the, the reason why you give anchor to the team of the season cards nowadays is because. Uh, their defensive stats are already really high up, so if you give them an anchor, it'll just be better, right? This card as a CDM, in my honest opinion, right, with an anchor card, I think he's going to play like an absolute beast, right? Medium high work rates. It's actually worth trying out Saul and Casemiro on the same team, right? Put off Casemiro to the right side, put off Saul onto the left side because Saul doesn't have the weak foot. Definitely worth looking into, man. Because Casemiro, I think, on the right side would be more ideal for sure. Or maybe it depends. Because Casemiro, if someone cuts in and tries to do a long shot, Casemiro on his right foot on the left side would be more beneficial. But I just think on the right side, he would be better because of the passing and the build-up play and stuff. I think he'd be very good at doing those, right? Um, so for a CDM, 83 acceleration, or let's just reset it. 73 acceleration and 70 sprint speed is still kind of low but he has so much stats that make up for it, right? 80 agility definitely makes up for a lot of the pace being low, right? So moving left and right with him will actually be very, very nice. He has very decent shooting stats considering that he's going to be a CDM for you. He's not garbage at taking shots. He's actually very usable at taking shots now, right? So definitely look into that as well. His passing is going to be um, very good too, considering that his passing is 99 short passing and 99 long, 99 long passing. So very, very nice. The thing with Casemiro's card is that you can ask him to be whatever CDM you want. So if you want, to, want him to be a more conservative CDM, you can tell him to do that. If you want him to be an aggressive CDM where he cuts the passing lanes and stuff, he's going to do a very good job of doing that too because he's a big guy in game with decent pace, not amazing pace, but decent pace with 95 aggression. And 97 setting, uh, 97 heading, uh, 97 interception. Excuse me. Uh, Casemiro has 98 sl uh, sliding tackle and 97 sliding tackle, with 93 marking. So this card, definitely try this card out, man. I think as a CDM, he's going to be amazing. But the pace, I feel like you're gonna still notice a bit. But other stats, like I said, they make up for the pace being a little bit crappy. So I would definitely look into this card, as well. Uh, Isco's card, Isco, Isco is just a fun card. Right off the bat, guys, I, I have to say it. I know a lot of people get annoyed by this, but I need to say it. This card is considered a usable card, but not a meta card. If you use Isco as a cam, he doesn't have enough pace. If you use Isco as a center mid, he doesn't have enough physical and defensive stats to be a good center mid. Can you have fun with this card, though? Absolutely. If you use uh, Isco in your team, right, his dribbling is going to be insane, right? His shooting is going to be, um, his shooting is going to be very good. Not amazing, but it's going to be very good because if you look at his traits, right, he has the finesse shot trait, which is very nice to have. Technical dribbler, playmaker. Uh, I don't know what selfish does, but these stats, right, these traits right here are definitely going to help to make his card more usable, right? So dribbling wise, going to be very good. Shooting wise, he's going to be quite decent. His shot power is eighty, but his long shots are ninety-seven. So if you take those, um outside the 18 yard box finesse shots across goal you'll notice that he won't be that good with power but direction and kind of whether it's straight or kind of loopy in terms of the finesse shot it'll be more straight because the the trait helps it out a lot passing stats are also very good so a usable center mid but so many stats are missing on this card to make him good man i think as a center mid he would just be 
non-existent as a as a player that you need to be able to defend properly with. Although he does have 80 interceptions with 83 Stein tackles, so it's not he's not completely garbage, but he won't be completely ideal for 249k. You could definitely do better uh, than Anisco. But if you're a fan of his in real life, uh, so on and so forth, Real Madrid, Spanish, then it's definitely worth looking into the card, right? Uh, Godin's card. So Godin's card, right off the bat, pace is far too low, right? Agility and balance is beautiful, though, I will say. For a center back, very, very nice. Um, because it's dribbling, I, I would if you give him a, a shadow card, if you give him a shadow card, I think that'd be the most ideal thing to do. Because I think that his physical stats are already good enough. I think you need to make his defensive stats. Because the reason why you give him a shadow is because his pace is too low, right? Because the pace is too low, you want to increase it as much as you possibly can. Because if it actually feels anywhere... Um, similar to 83 acceleration, 84 sprint speed. Uh, he would be really nice too. Power header traits, a big one, guys. And dives into tackles is a good one too. Dives into tackles is good because these two things right here are going to be... Well, okay, here's the problem. Dives into tackles could be could be good and bad. It could be good because if someone takes a shot, your player AI, will, um, your player's AI will just do it for him right you'll be able to tackle with him uh tackle him without you having to do anything the bad thing about it right is the lunge mechanic right if he has dives into tackles the lunge mechanic will be more annoying with Goldeen if he doesn't get the ball more often than not because the lunge mechanic could be good right if Goldeen gets the ball more often than not but if he doesn't then that's a big problem the beautiful thing about this card is the power header trait. The power header trait is definitely going to help you out a lot. He has good passing stats, which is seems to be most of the thing with the team of the season cards uh, from the League of Santander. So that's actually very nice to see. Um, defensive stats, he's an absolute god. Physical stats, he's an absolute god. 73 stamina, not a big uh, issue considering that he is a center back. Um, although stamina is good no matter what. If you do a corner and you try to aim for Goldin, that power header trait is going to be very, very nice to have. He's going to hit absolute bangers for you. Considering that he is also six foot one with 98 jumping and 99 hitting accuracy, definitely look into the card as well. Medium high def defensive work rates, also very nice to have, but I would definitely recommend giving him a shout out to boost the pace as much as you possibly can, right? So um, yeah, another good card as well. Uh, Oblak's card is a card you would use for fun. I don't think he has a like save trait, so really not worth me uh, reviewing him because the stats are very... There's no specifics to the diving reflexes and stuff, so it's whatever you see is whatever you think, right? Uh, Iago Aspas's card, another very, very usable card, but he does have 3-star, three 3-star, three which is a little bit underwhelming, but very, very fun concept here, right? He has 93 acceleration, not 87 sprint speed. So right off the bat, you have to increase his pace. Uh, agility, 99, 87 bounce. So dribbling on the ball with him, he's going to be very, very good. With his work rates being high, high, it's actually worth looking into this card, playing him as a, as a right mid in your team, right? I think as a right mid, he'd be okay. But the height could present to be a problem from time to time for sure. 80 aggression, 74 strength, uh, 88 stamina. 86 jumping is actually quite nice to have for someone who's going to be playing as a right mid for sure. Uh, again, dribbling on the ball, he's going to be rapid at. Finishing is actually very good. He is a left-footed player, right? Uh, playing on the right side without the weak foot being four-star. So if you look at his card, he's very oriented around um, taking the finesse shot. So cutting inside, finesse shotting it. Or uh, being the defensive line. So if you if because he has that trait, if you're using like a four four two or something, right, and or you're using a four three three false nine, and you want your left wings and right wings to stay on the side and beat that defensive line, he's going to do a very good job of doing that. But because he's left footed, I would highly recommend playing his card off to the left side because that left foot on the left side is going to be very important the chip shot trait also very very nice so if you get into those really really tight angles uh he'll be able to consistently hit some decent chip shots for you um as well so the next card that we got going here is sergio busquets's card <sighs> that pace guys that pace is just so low it hurts it hurts to even think about right 68 acceleration, 48 sprint speed, 63 agility, 60 balance. 
bleh, just wouldn't use it, guys. I wouldn't use this card, man. Just right off the bat, I need to keep reiterating that. I just wouldn't use this card. I, I, I don't even think it's worth looking at everything else because the, the pace is just it's far too low on this card, man. It's just it's not usable at all. Uh, Adon's card. I don't know if Adon has a leg save trait, but th th okay. Here's the thing about Adon's card. Adon's card. He actually is a pretty good goalkeeper in the game, but again, doesn't have the leg save trait. So there's from time to time when someone takes that driven shot against you, and he doesn't have the leg save trait. Kind of annoying when he doesn't have it, right? So, um, yeah. But as a goalkeeper, generally speaking, without the leg save trait, he's actually uh, pretty good. Rodrigo's card's an interesting one to review. So he has 94 acceleration, 98 sprint speed, 93 agility with 78 bounce, which isn't bad. The bounce part doesn't it doesn't bother me too much because he's 5'11". Oh, that's the thing that throws me off now. He has 79 composure. He like 79 composure. <sighs> the card's usable, but the composure being 79 irks me way too much. That's like Martial level composure a regular martial level composure so that's a little bit unfortunate his other cards like this card has 69 composure that's really bad they should have at least given him like an 83 84 composure 79 is just far too low in my opinion uh but he does have 91 finishing 99 shot power 90 long shots so shooting wise he's good he's pretty good but it's that, it's that composure that kind of diminishes the shooting a little bit right he does have good jumping and good heading accuracy considering that he is five foot eleven actually really really nice to have uh so if you cross the ball into him he'll actually do a very good or he'll do a very decent job at it uh traits wise he has the dribbler speed dribbler trait so he's probably super respond well he's not gonna be super responsive on the ball he's going to be decent on the ball uh, this is an interesting one he actually does have tries to beat the defensive line so if you're using him as a striker play him as a left striker Tries to beat the defensive line in a 4 and 2 and 2 or a 4 3 1 2 will be very, very nice to have. Uh, 84 strength. If you're going to give this card anything, uh, his pace is already quite nice, so you would only have to improve it by a little bit. So I'd probably consider giving him Maestro, which would give him, and I probably just skipped over it. Uh, not Maestro, uh, Engine, I think, is the card. Yeah, because Engine would give him. Uh, Oh no 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 no! You need to you need to improve the shooting as much as you possibly can. Uh, Guardian anchor shadow catalyst backbone no powerhouse hawk hawk would give him physical. The dribbling limb being improved would have been nice. Don't care about the passing. Don't care about the pass. Oh, physical being improved would be nice too. Um, yeah, you could consider actually giving him a marksman card. So his dribbling would be better. His shooting would be better. But. His physical is already quite nice, so I'd actually consider giving him a sniper wherever that is. Sniper is right here. So giving him sniper would actually be ideal to improve his balance as much as possible. So that way, you can really utilize the dribbler and the speed dribbler trait uh, better, right? So definitely worth looking into this card too. Uh, but 79 composure, man. thats It's irking me that it's even there, right? But the physical stats are actually quite nice. Aggression-wise, is not there. So that's not a huge issue because the strength is okay, but the aggression would have been nice when he's... Uh, whenever he's going to be battling off against another defender. So a um, little bit lackluster there as well, but not a bad card. Philippe Luiz. Philippe Luiz is a card. I thought last year he was better than he is this year, but Philippe Luiz right off the bat, acceleration is low, but the sprint speed is good. So right off the bat, you have to give him probably a shadow because I'd want to improve his pace as much as possible, right? So if you give him a shadow card, if you believe in these stats, right? 96 acceleration, 99 sprint speed with very, very good defensive stats and really good um, physical stats because he's really, really good physically in game. He's going to be awesome to use, right? 65 bounce isn't a big issue. Uh, the jumping being 70, but being 5'11 could be a little bit of an issue from time to time. Um, not that often, though. 70 jumping would be okay. To be honest, if you want to make his jumping a little bit better, giving him an anchor actually wouldn't be that bad because you would improve his jumping, which uh, would then improve... Uh, not being able to concede far post cross that often because he is a pretty big guy in game. So worth looking into if you believe in the uh, chemistry styles of the cards because he actually has incredible passing stats in general. So very nice to have if you're playing in a wide formation. So 4-3-3 or um, a 4-2-3-1 where you, where you can actually lay the ball off to the side. So 
definitely looking uh, worth looking into again if you believe in the chemistry styles. Uh, next card is Sergi Roberto. Sergi Roberto looks like a really, really fun card to use. Again, the pace isn't there. I would consider him a fun, usable player, not a fun meta player, right? Uh, fun, usable player because his pace isn't up there, but everything else with this card is very nice. His finishing is quite decent for someone who's going to be playing as a right back for you with medium, medium work rates. You can tell him to be an aggressive attacker or a conservative defender, which is very nice, right? High medium would make him more aggressive at attacking, but medium, medium, there's a little bit of a balance there in terms of what you want him to do. Physically, he's going to be quite decent as well. 88 strength with 75 aggression, 92 stamina. So very, very nice as well. Defensive stats, he's an absolute god. His heading accuracy is low as well as his jumping. So with this card, if you're going to be using him, I would probably give him an anchor as well because he's going to still fit his characteristics of not being a crazy fast fullback. But if you give him an anchor card, definitely worth looking into because he would improve his jumping quite significantly uh, to make him a more usable card for someone who's not going to be conceding far post crosses that often, right? So definitely worth into looking uh, as well into trying him. Gonzalo Gedge is the last card here. So Gonzalo Gedge... I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've used Gonzalo Gedge in uh, drafts, which was this one right here. And he was okay, to be honest. He wasn't that bad. And I think that his team of the season would be a lot of fun to use, considering that he is Portuguese. And if you're a Port of Portuguese descent or you're a fan of Valencia, so on and so forth, definitely worth looking into the card. I wouldn't use him as a left mid. Whenever I switched him in-game or subbed him on, I put him off to the right mid side. So that way... Um, you know, if I ever pass the ball off to him, he can actually take a really good driven shot because he does have 89 finishing with 92 shot power. Very good on the ball considering that his balance is 82 with 96 agility, 95 acceleration, 90 sprint speed. If you're going to improve this card anymore, Hunter right off the bat. You want to make his shooting as good as possible and his pace as good as possible. So um, another very, very good card. Lackluster that it is, three three star, three star, but 21 years old. This guy's a beast in real life, by the way. Um, definitely looking, uh, definitely looking forward to playing him in the draft if he ever pops up. Right, he would be a really good, uh, he would be a really good midfielder to have for sure, man. I think he'd be a lot of fun to use. So that is gonna conclude the video for today, guys. I hope you guys uh, did enjoy. That's basically covering all the players. I'm pretty sure I didn't miss anything. If I did, I do apologize. This is what I see over here. So if you guys did enjoy the video, by the end of it, be sure to drop a thumbs up on it. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.